Hi, good to watching this video. In this video, I show you 20 theory questions, the answers and explanations from the CBR category driving safely. And if you think after this video, I want to see all your videos and do all your mock tests, and then you go to theorycourse.com and there you can order your complete theory course. So complete means including all the videos and all the mock tests. And now I go to the first question. Question one. Is it wise to take off your seat belt when driving close to the water? Yes or no? Of course, this answer must be no, because if you are driving, the seat belt must always be on. Question 2. For whom does the headrest need to be properly adjusted? Answer A. Only for the driver. Answer B. For the driver and all passengers. Answer C. Only for the driver and the passenger in the front seat. And in this case, the answer must be B. For the driver and all passengers. Everyone who steps into a car must adjust his headrest. Question number three. This pregnant driver uses a three-point belt as a lap belt. Is that allowed? Yes or no? And the right answer is no. If the seat belt is too short, she has a problem. She may not drive or use an extension. Question number four. About what percentage of traffic accidents are caused by human errors? Is it answer A, 60%, answer B, 75%, or is it answer C, 90%? And of course, the right answer is 90%, because when there occurs an accident, one of the two drivers is guilty, and they're both human beings. And in this case, the woman who wants to drive into the water is human being. So the percentage of traffic accidents caused by human errors is 90% or more. Question number five. You have a flat tire. Are you making good use of the emergency lane? Yes or no? No is the right answer. The CBR is only satisfied if the car is parked just about here, as far as right as possible. And if there is no rail over here, you must park your car here in the curbs. Question 6. You have a breakdown. In general, what is the safest place for the driver? Answer A. In the car. Answer B. At the front of the car. And answer C. Behind the car rail. And as far as possible away from the drivers over here. So behind the car rail. And if there is no rail over here, you go in the thirds as far as possible. And not, of course, only the driver, also the passengers after the car rail. CBR often asks you, it's very bad weather with a lot of rain. Where is the safest place? And yeah, as it rains or the sun is shining, always behind the car rail of in the thirds. Question 7. You had a breakdown and you want to continue your journey and you want to enter the continuous carriage way. Do you have to indicate yes or no? The right answer is yes. If you go to the left lane or to the right lane or whatever you are doing, you have to indicate always. 
Question eight. If you want to leave a motorway about how many meters before the exit lane do you indicate? Answer A, about 300 meters. Answer B, about 600 meters. Or answer C, about 1200 meters. Right answer, answer A, if you want to leave a motorway about 300 meters before the exit lane you indicate. So not at 600, it's too early, 300 meters. Question 9. You have just left the continuous carriage way and you are on the exit lane now. When do you turn off your turn signal? Answer A. At the end of the block marking. Of answer B. As soon as you drive into the exit lane. The right answer is answer A, at the end of the block marking, as soon as you cannot go back to the left lane, you turn off the turn signal. Question 10. At how many meters of visibility do we speak of very dense fog? Answer A, with a visibility of less than 50 meters. Answer B, with a visibility of less than 100 meters. Of answer C, with a visibility of less than 200 meters. And the right answer is answer A. We speak of a very dense fog when the visibility is less than 50 meters. And we speak of a dense fog when the visibility is less than 200 meters. Snowfall limits visibility to less than 200 meters. You are now running fog lights in the front. Is that allowed? Yes or no? It is. If visibility is less than 200 meters by fog, snowfall or rain, you may use fog lights at the front. And if visibility is less than 50 meters, you may use fog lights at the rear, but only by snowfall or fog, not by rain. Question 12. You carry a rear fog light during heavy rainfall. Is that allowed? Yes or no? And the right answer is no. I told you 30 seconds before. A rear fog light may only be used by snowfall or fog and not by rain. Never use your rear fog light in the Netherlands by rain. Question number 13. Due to traffic behind you, insert is not yet possible. Can you already indicate yes or no? No, you cannot. You must wait until there is no traffic behind you and if it's possible to go to the left, at that moment you indicate, not earlier. Question 14. In which situation can you drive with high beam? Answer A. Only in situation A. Answer B. Only in situation B. Or answer C. This is not allowed in both situations. The right answer is only in situation B. You may drive with high beams in the night and inside and outside the built-up area as long as you don't bother anybody else. So in this picture, picture B, you are allowed to drive with high beam. And in fog, you never use high beam. Never. Question 15. The visibility is 70 meters. You drive with your rear fog light on. Is that allowed? Yes or no? No is the right answer because you may use your rear fog light if there is. What then? What kind of weather? Very good. Snow or fog. 
but the visibility must be less than 50 meters. So in this case, it's not allowed. Question 16. You drive here with high beams. Is that allowed? Yes or no? The right answer is yes. You don't drive after an other driver and there is no oncoming traffic. And in that case, you may use high beams. And high beams you may use only in the night. Question 17. It is daytime. Visibility is poor due to rain. Which lighting can you use? It's answer A. Dipped headlights. Answer B. Full beam headlights. Or answer C. Dipped or full beam headlights. Right answer is answer A. Because in daytime you may never use full beam. Never. So answer B and C both are wrong. Only you dip it headlights in daytime. 18. Under which conditions that limit visibility to less than 50 meters can you leave the rear fog lights on? Answer A. Rain and fog. Answer B. Fog and snowfall. Or answer C. Rain and snowfall. You may use the rear fog lights never ever by rain. So answer E and C you can delete right away. The right answer, answer B. Question 19. Rear fog light may be used in fog or snowfall when visibility is less than 50 meters, 100 meters or 200 meters. Right answer. Answer A. Rear fog light may be used when the visibility is less than 50 meters. So not with 60, 70 or whatever. Only 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 meters. And the final question of this video. Can you use fog lights at the front without using dipped headlights? Is it yes or is it no? And yes, you can. You may use fog lights when the visibility is less than 200 meters and you don't have to use dipped headlights. You have to use rear lights, of course, but the dipped headlights are not necessary. Those were the 20 questions of this video. I hope you learned something about the Dutch theory. And if you want to learn everything about the Dutch theory, you go to theorycourse.com and there you order your complete theory course. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope to see you by the next video. Gracias, adios, ciao.